Hello and welcome back. Actually, is this recording? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Honey. I know it's been a really, really long time since I filmed the video, but I've been like super, super busy. I've just got back into my old job and I work really, really late hours and I've just been spending the morning sleeping in. And then I get up, I get ready for work, go to work, come back and do it all over again. One thing I've been doing a lot in my free time recently is reading. I recently got a Kobo and it's basically just like an e-reader that I got on Indigo or at Indigo ago and this kind of kickstarted my whole reading era this year. I read four books in one month which is like not a lot to some people but is a lot to me because I used to read like less than a book a month and last year my goal was to read 12 books in the year and this year I made it a goal to read at least 15 books because last year I read 15 books so I just you know like made my goal of last year I made what I read last year my goal this year, and I've already surpassed it, and it's only June. And so, yeah, I'm in my reading girl era, if, if you will. I wanted to make this video just to like explain how I kind of fell back in love with reading and maybe I can help you fall back in love with reading too because I know in middle school when like Hunger Games and Diversion and Maze Runner were like the biggest things, that was when like I was at the peak of my reading and I think a lot of people can relate to that and as you grow into adulthood and into your 20s, you kind of feel like reading becomes a chore and I want to help people get back into reading. So yeah let's let's get into it for me when i was going into university and like entering my adulthood i felt that i couldn't read fictional books anymore because i needed to read for my intellect so picking things up like atomic habits and um, how to talk to people how to make friends how to make connections and things like that and for me that made me fall out of reading just as fast as i fell into reading and for a long time i kind of just stopped reading altogether because it just wasn't a passion anymore. That being said, if nonfiction books and self-help books are your thing, don't mind me. Don't mind me, keep doing your thing. If you love reading those, then that's totally okay. But for me, that just wasn't something that I found joy in. So one tip I have if you want to fall back in love with reading is going back into a genre that you really, really love. And for me, that genre is more like fantasy, dystopian, young adult. And that's kind of where I began my reading journey this year. The first book that I picked up for 2024 was actually the song, not the song, the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. This is a Suzanne Collins book. And if you can kind of already tell by the cover, this is a Hunger Games prequel. When I was like 13 years old, I lived and breathed Hunger Games. I wanted to braid my hair. I wanted to wear the pin. I wanted to fight. I loved that world. I love dystopian settings and seeing like a strong female lead, like freaking lead a revolution. So that was a lot of words, but as soon as I saw that The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes was making a movie, or it was like, I guess it was making a movie a while ago, but then I found out that it was like releasing, I picked up this book immediately. This book, however, was quite slow and didn't really, really pick up my reading, um, but it was a good start to the year. I was in tune with my childhood, for real, for real. If you also loved the Hunger Games series, I would recommend picking this book up. It's about, um, Coralina Snow and he's basically President Snow in the real world real world in the present day Coralina Snow when he was young we're gonna go with that when he was young and basically just kind of like goes through his journey of one of his the first Hunger Games where they had mentors for the tributes um, so I think that was like the 10th Hunger Games. I can't remember now. It's been a while since I read this. But yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a little bit slower paced, but very interesting to see just how sinister he is. I heard in the movie, it doesn't quite capture just how like wicked his mind goes uh, during certain scenes. But if you read this, you just like, oh my God, you're such a bad person. But the book that really got me into reading this year that wasn't directly related to the Hunger Games or like a different series. Who's this bad boy? This book is all over book talk, bookstagram, bookish, whatever. And I fell victim. I 
I want to know what the hype is about. I have extreme FOMO. So I picked this up. Um, I think it's like always on sale at Indigo for like 30 bucks, a hardcover. This was so good. I could not put this down. Like usually I am very fearful of big books. Like if I see something like this, I would steer straight away. I love reading my like 200 page Japanese translated literary fiction, but there was something about the hype of this book that just like was like calling my name. And then I saw some like book talk edits about like how to train your dragon meets like adult romance. And Exactly who and what you are, Violet Sorngale. And I was like, that sounds really good. And so I started reading it and I refused to put it down. If you haven't already picked this up, this is Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. It's basically like an academia fantasy enemies to lovers is a stretch but maybe like forced proximity um and it's beautiful it's like a great mix of like action adventure a little tiny bit of romance okay maybe a little bit more than a tiny bit of romance but it's the romance is not what carries this book it's the dragons and the action and the fighting and the the banter it's, it's so good i would highly recommend picking this up if you're into fantasy books and if you like how to train your dragon if you like dragons period like this is so good she released a second book earlier or late last year and i'm in the middle of reading that one i refuse to finish it because this is supposed to be a five book series and only two books have come out and the third book doesn't come out till january of 2025 and i just can't be left on a cliffhanger like that if i could help myself i am putting the second book on hold right now but I'm very, very, very excited to see where the series goes. Another thing that really got me into reading is when I picked up my... Picked up my... Oh my god. When I picked up my Kobo, not from the ground, from Indigo, this thing has been so lovely. I got a case from Indigo as well. It was, I think, like under $200 altogether. Put some like cute stickers on it. Certified reader so cute and then yeah this thing has been amazing i got kobo plus for like 15 bucks a month and it comes with like like a huge variety of books and it's not even just like books that like are like classics and things you don't want to read like, there are some very interesting books on kobo plus that like are so worth your money so i got a subscription and then i also buy like a couple books on the side that i want to read for like book clubs and whatnot and then you can also uh, rent books from the library directly on your Kobo. You just download the app on your phone and it's amazing. I kid you not, I finished Kim Ji Young 1980 whatever in one sitting. I love books that kind of tackle the gender norm and kind of showcase like what it's like to be in a woman in a society with so much preju prejudice and Kim Ji Young made me so angry. If you want to read a book about feminine rage, definitely go check out Kim Ji Young. I got it on Kobo Plus. Um, but honestly, I might buy the physical copy because I love that book so much. I give it five stars. So, 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 so good. Speaking of rating books, something that really got me into rating also as well is just having a Goodreads account. Making my Goodreads account made me like connect with my friends and like some other people that I follow on BookTok and I get to see like their little reviews and I'm like, oh my god, I wonder if I would like that because that sounds like right up my alley but they only gave it three stars or wow, they give this star five stars, almost six stars and I want to see what that's like. So that kind of like really added into this like, wow, book community and figuring out what I want to read and I think being a part of a book community even if you're not like in a book club or anything like that that kind of motivates you to read as well. Another thing on Goodreads is that you can put what page number you are on in the book in Goodreads and it will like show you this little progress bar of how far you're in and that gave me like a little boost of like serotonin dopamine and motivates me to read even more. So when I like 
login that I'm on page 127 and it tells me I'm 45% of the way done the book. I'm like, damn girl, you did that. You did that. So that's another thing that motivates me to read is just that little progress bar. And if you like that as well, the Kobo also has a progress bar at the bottom that tells you like what page you are on out of what page. And it also tells you what percentage you're at as well. So that's like, also motivates me to read as well. On top of having a Goodreads account, I also created a reading journal. I've always been a big journaler ever since I was in high school and creating a reading journal helped me hone in on my hobbies. And I love having a reading journal. It helps me like organize kind of like my TBR and what I want to read, my ratings, little snippets, um, mood boards, things like that. And I love having a, a space where I can like really think about the books that I've read and kind of like analyze them on a personal level. Like this isn't like English, like 30-1 reading comprehension or anything like that, but this is just like being able to write down your thoughts about a book without any judgment, without any bias. It's just purely your thoughts and it doesn't even have to make sense. Like you can just write down things like, wow, Zayden was really hot in that chapter, like things like that. and. You know, you're still connecting and engaging with the book and it makes reading a lot more fun. My last tip for falling back into the reading is having a TBR that you can love. As I said before, I thought I wanted to read things like Atomic Habits and self-help books and finance books and all of these things. And that's kind of what I filled my TBR with. It's like, ah, mental note, remember to read, how to make friends and things like that. But I quickly realized that that wasn't my cup of tea and I wasn't motivated to read that TBR at all. I would look at it and I would be like, ew, not for me. Again, if that's your cup of tea, that's totally fine, but it wasn't for me. So creating a TBR that you love and you can look forward to is kind of what helped me. And I have huge FOMO. So how I've kind of picked my TBR is looking on book talk and seeing what everyone's reading and what everyone's loving. And if it sounds like something that I would actually enjoy, I add it to my TBR in Goodreads. And then I also have like a physical TBR, which is like growing way too big. This is not even like half of my physical TBR right now. Not again. Having that physical TBR and it's like pretty, I'm like, wow, I need to get that down so I can buy more. So I thought I'd kind of go through my summer TBR with you guys so that you can kind of see what kind of books you're into and see if anything on my list will be on yours. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's do physical books first. I'm currently reading Six of Crows right now. I'm about halfway through. I think that's halfway, that looks halfway. And this is so good. It's about like six criminals. I'm just gonna read you the back. Ketterdam, a bustling hub of international trade where anything can be had for the right price. And no one knows that better than criminal prodigy Kaz Brecker. Kaz is offered a chance at a deadly heist that could make him rich beyond his wildest dreams, but he can't pull it off alone. A convict with thirst for revenge, a sharpshooter who can't walk away from a wager, a runaway with a pro a privileged past, a spy known as the Wraith, a heart render using her magic to survive the slums, a thief with a gift for unlikely escapes. Kaz's crew are the only ones who might stand between the world and destruction if they don't kill each other first. And like, tell, like, what? Like, that sounds so interesting. So I immediately picked up both books. Like, I didn't even, I didn't even read this one before I picked up the second one. I was just like, this, this sounds amazing. Picked up both books. And I am loving it so far. This is like super quick paced, but also like, okay, so not quick paced, it's well paced. The plot is being driven that's very like, it's still very engaging, but it's also like, they're going back and forth between like backstory and plot and it's done in such a great way. It's also a mix of like, all the, the freaking tropes you could think of. Like there's like some forbidden love, there's some forced proximity, there's like, who hurts you, there's like some, I would burn the world for you kind of like tropes and I'm eating it up. Like this is, this is good. So this is, I'm hoping to finish this by the end of the month and then pick this up right away. So that's kind of first on my list. The next books I want to read are kind of book talk books. They were released very recently. Like I think one was like literally a couple months ago and then one was like maybe within the last year. And that is Azel, Hazel, Allie Hazelwood's two books, Not In Love and Bride. 
these look really really good i have never been like a pure romance reader i always like having like a romance see or like action dystopian with a little bit of romance but this will be my first like true romance book and i'm quite i'm quite excited so um start with bride i guess so bride from what i know is like a vampire werewolf like kind of thing i don't know anyway so a vampire how do you say that word is it vampire or vamp vampire bride and an alpha werewolf form a dangerous alliance with this enthralling new paranormal romance i'll leave it at that i don't want to spoil it too much but that looks really really good and then not in love a forbidden secret affair proves that all's fair in love and science mm. if you didn't know i'm a girl in stem so like i eat this shit up too and i'm really excited and i just love her covers like like, they're just so beautiful. I love that all her books, even though they're not a series, are the same size. It's just gonna be beautiful. I love it. Love it. And they were on sale at Indigo. Like, they're doing, like, a book talk sale for, like, everything under 20 bucks. It's a little lit. What? Another book that's been on my TBR for, like, ever is Kite Runner. I read one of his, one of Khaled Hossein's books in high school called A Thousand Splendid Sons, and that book absolutely broke me. And I've heard a lot of good things about Kite Runner and that it, and that it also breaks people and is just absolutely a sob story. And sometimes I'm in the mood for that. So that's kind of what this is. I'm ready, I'm ready to cry. Like, I'm ready. <laughs> this book is something that my boyfriend has been wanting to read and I, picked it up at a local bookstore because they had it and he's not really a big reader right now he like likes to read a manga but I said I would read it first and then let him lend it or let him borrow it um this is no longer human so this is literary fiction I actually don't know too too much about it other than the fact that it's says that it's a semi-autobiography and it's like basically about isolation and like this guy trying to be a regular human being. I think he's a robot, maybe. I'm not sure. Anyways, really excited for this. If you read this, let me know. And uh, is it good? Is it worth it? I don't know. Another book that my boyfriend recommended me to read is Maniac McGee. This is more of like a young adult, like kids, teens book almost. And I also have no idea what it's about, but I'm gonna go into it blind. So another one. And then last on my physical TBR, but not last like ever, but I have more, but this is last for my summer TBR, is in the, inter the Inheritance Games. I've heard so many good things about this book, but this is also a series, and I heard the rest of the series is bad, but I already picked up the first book, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I love it, and that I can get the other two or three books after it and see how, how that goes, but um, this seems really, really interesting. I think it's mostly like mystery romance kind of, kind of thing, and yeah, I'm really excited to pick this up. And then lastly, or not lastly, actually, second lastly, I have some books on my Kobo reader that I want to read. And let's just, let's just read them out. Here we go. I want to read 1984 by George Orwell, which is a classic. I really enjoyed, I, I recently read Animal Farm by George Orwell, and I thought it was really, really, really interesting. So I thought I'd pick up 1984 as well. Uh, another book I want to read is Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. Everything I Never Told You is actually in my next book club read. I host an online book club on Fable. It's like a free book club. And I just want to build a community. So if you want to read everything, Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng, I'll put a link to my Fable in the description below and be sure to join us. Okay, anyways, uh, another book I want to read is The Bell Jar, which is another classic. I also want to read like all of the Avatar The Last Airbender comics because like I read the first two or three and they're actually really interesting like they do a good job of translating from the animation to the to the comic and I'm like loving where the story is going like Zuko is Fire Lord right now they're kind of like restoring peace in the lands they're kind of making this republic where like different vendors can like intermingle like the fire nation doesn't have to be strictly fire nation earth nation doesn't have to be strictly earth kingdom and they're kind of like just like whew, 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 and i love it and it's kind of like building up to like legend of korra because like i remember watching legend of korra and being like huh what and so like i like seeing the progression to like modern society and whatever 
So those are kind of my Kobo books that I want to read. Lastly, Spotify recently added audiobooks to their Spotify premium accounts. Love that shit. I have been wanting to read all of the Bridgerton series, and so I already finished the first one about Daphne, so like the Duke and I, Daphne and Simon. And it was fantastic. I love the narrator. She has like the perfect voice. I think it's the narrator in the actual show. And I'm super excited to finish the series because like I was obsessed with Bridgerton when it came out. The first, the first and second season were like, oh, so good. Simon and Daphne, beautiful season. Definitely got me into it. Built up to the second season. Second season did not disappoint. Kate and Anthony. Oh my God. And I just recently watched the third season and the third season doesn't hit the same as the last two seasons But like it is what it is. They got like a new screenwriter or whatever and But I still even that shit up, you know, so I'm planning to read those read those and listen to those as audiobooks on Spotify Because they have all of them and I'm super super excited Thank you for sitting through my little spiel about me being my reading era And if you enjoy this kind of content be sure to comment subscribe like this video Whatever you whatever your heart entails but I would really appreciate it and stay tuned for the next one also if you don't already follow me on my socials I post a lot of food content this is kind of out of my realm but you know it's kind of what I've been passionate about lately so yeah look out for more reading content I guess anyways see you guys in the next one bye